We're here at East Lake, host of the Tour Championship and of course the FedEx Cup playoff finale. And it's been one of the great spots for drama. You think about the Rory McIlroy hole out. You think about Jim Furyk with his backwards hat. Bill Haas out of the water. Well, the golf course has gone through some serious changes over the last 11 months. And we wanted to highlight some of those changes when the PGA Tour returns for the Tour Championship. Mowing greens this morning is going to be shorty. You'll be GC1, Lee GC2, Eric's GC3, Sam GC4, and Garvey GC5. We're going to try to mow approaches a little later this morning. Um, so the guys that are mowing approaches, we're just going to rake fairway bunkers for right now. And then as soon as y'all are finished with fairway bunkers, we're going to get on the triplexes, OK? Totaled up the rain for the month of July. That's 9.74 inches of rain. I don't know what the record is, but that's got to be pretty close, I would imagine. The 10 day forecast, there's actually some days with some sunshine in it, so we need to make hay while we can, okay? Um, How's it been the last, let's say, 10, 10 and a half months? A little bit stressful, but the stress kind of goes away the more you get used to it, the more experience you have with it. But this year is obviously a completely different game. <laughs> How are the conversations with Andrew Green and his team? You know, it was a solid year plus of planning before, before the first dozer ever even hit the ground. How many days after the Victor Hovland putt did you start working on the golf course? Was it the next day? We started working on Tuesday. There was an event Monday. <laughs> they started clearing out the build out. You know, so all the structures right. that started on Monday, but we started construction on Tuesday. And we had a milestone to complete the front nine by Christmas. Okay. And then the thought being that we could finish this other side on the second half of the project window. There were a few hurdles, there were a few anxious moments, but overall we had an amazing team. Over 200 people took part in the construction of this. And everybody's sole effort was to create the best golf possible for this year's Tour Championship. Kind of serving more like a GC than a superintendent, okay. honestly, just having to you know, figure out and coordinate all the different contractors that are on site at all times and making sure that people are coming in at the right times to finish up in certain areas. And, you know, instead of honing in on every tiny last little blade of grass like we typically are, it's more like, hey, are we just going to be able to have a sod on the ground here instead of clay? So uh, just trying to make sure that, you know, all those boxes get checked this year. The golf course got a lot of rain last night. So we're gonna kind of get the bunkers back in shape, Sam? Yeah, that's right. All right, will you show me the skill set? Let's see how good you are. All right. You just go from like right here and then just push it up like okay. that. Okay. Did you see that? He gave me one rake tip. That's all you need. And then we're just gonna go all the way around. You go all the way around to all the edges, sweet. What time's call time every day, Sam? 6 a.m. All right. And then you're just going to start in the center here. Just go around in circles and make a circle. All right. Go around in circles, make a circle. Seems easy enough. Sam's like, I'm going to start coming in at 6.15 now. Look at that thing. Good work. Hey, there's there's one footprint in there. You might Whatever. have to go fix it. I'm, I'm good. I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. Nobody's playing golf out here. When we were interviewing with Andrew, one thing that he did that was really cool in his process was he was able to find photos from archives of an aerial shot of the property from like, literally from every decade. We really like to find something in the 30s or as close to the depression as possible. That shows us the closest thing to the, an original, say it's in the teens or 20s, to how it would have been presented. Here, we found one in 49. Typically, that's way too late. Okay. There's been a lot of life that's led to that. But this one in particular was a very high quality image. So when you zoomed in, anything that had been lost to time, you could still see some sort of remnant. And he was like, this was kind of my North Star for the design of the property. And then we just had a bunch of other supplemental information that just kind of reinforced what we were seeing in that picture. What pole is going to be the most different from 
pre-restoration to this season's FedEx Cup finale? Seven. We opened up a lot of views coming down the right side of the hole, and we kind of opened up the hole itself. This tree lined all the way up this way? Yeah, this okay. was like a full tree lined edge down the, down here. This whole left side had more trees coming down it as well. Okay. And then you kind of got down to this area over here on the right side of seven, and this was just a solid wall of trees. Okay. You couldn't see. So we wouldn't any, be able to see the no, clubhouse? No, right no, nothing. The fact that we've opened this up now, the views are just unbelievable. And it's kind of like a full experience as you're playing the hole. The hole, it's still a par four. There's still some risk reward, but it's unbelievable the, the architecture that Andrew came up with on that hole. I think the biggest thing will be the greens. They've all changed in their shape. And a lot of them have changed locations. The routing has stayed pretty much the, the way it was previously, but we really worked with available topography to provide more variety. So the sixth par five uh, scoring hole, but the green is in a very different position. You were, right. you're saying the green was, what, 40 yards left of here? Yeah, it used to be 40 yards left, kind of tucked up under those trees right there. And there were a few more trees right here that kind of blocked it from getting the amount of sunlight that it really needed for a Bermuda grass green. Andrew pulled the tee south and he pulled the fairway south and he kept the pivot point in the same spot and then he took the green and he pulled it to the south too. So, you know, you went from a, a dog leg like that to a dog leg like okay, that. Okay, okay. So, um, and it, it lengthened the hole a little bit too, but it, it'll still be gettable for the tour players, but it plays dramatically different. Did anything shock you by that image? Did you see something on the image and you went, I can't believe this existed here or I didn't even know? Yeah, I think the dual greens is gonna continue to kind of be towards the top of that list. Why, why, why was there two greens? Was it grass for the weather or what? Yeah, exactly. So they had kind of a winter green and a summer green. Okay. And depending on the time of year, you'd play to one <laughs> or the other. Maybe sometimes you could play to either one you want. Right. So we have 36 greens for 18 holes. Right. So sometimes he would kind of take inspiration from both of those greens and kind of create one out of it which is like what he did on number one and then when you read some of the, the information that uh, bobby jones talked about or reporting on his play you see some really cool stuff like 17 there was a par three version okay so one way it was a par three other ways it was a four crazy You're at an amazing place like East Lake, where so many amazing players have been here, obviously fostering Bobby Jones. It's just super important to the legacy of the club to respect that past. You mentioned the club. The Tour Championship and the FedEx Cup is important, very important for one week out of the year. 51 weeks out of the year, it's important for the members to enjoy the golf course. How do you balance that? How do you build a golf course or restore a golf course and allow a 15 handicapper that hits at 200 yards to enjoy it and also have Rory McIlroy be able to go out there and, and have a, a tough test or a stern test. We put the fairway bunkers in the best locations for kind of the back tees, and then we situated the other tees to kind of play into that. So the best players from every tee is challenged to make sure they pick a line and a distance okay. that's best for their play. Around the greens, we were certainly able to really respect the history because the putting surface, their shapes and the bunker configurations, they work whether it's 1920 or 2024. Uh, the variety of hole locations allows the Tour Championship to set up as hard as they want okay. or maybe as gently as they want <laughs> and then allows the uh, average player to have a lot of fun playing time and time again. And so, you know, that's really the magic of this is taking all the history, all the goals for today and tomorrow and trying to make it fit together. When you think of Donald Ross, what do you think of as a designer? He did 400 and some courses, whatever, sure. you know. I'd like to see where he took a piece of ground and unlocked its potential. So I just love looking at all his different work and seeing how he was able to put those pieces together. I think there's just a, a beautiful breadth of his work, and I think a few of the features we have here really speak to that. This golf course was, was designed in the 20s, is that right? I mean, it's 2024. How do you go about combining kind of new age philosophies in terms of architecture with technology and also keeping this thing classical, obviously, to an ode to Donald Ross. Folks that will be watching the event, they're certainly going to see the difference in the grasses. We've got brand new zoysia grass in the fairways and a really interesting, cool kind of putting green quality zoysia grass around the greens themselves. That is a huge upgrade. The traditional nasty 419 Bermuda is still here. The ball is <laughs> going to sink to the bottom for sure. Um, when it comes to the greens themselves, there's a lot of inherent infrastructure. 
We've got a sub-air system that connects to the drainage underneath, allows you to push air in, pull air out, as well as water, especially on a day like today. And then we also have the ability to heat and cool the greens with a hydronic system. 12 inches beneath the actual surface that we're standing on, we have a series of uh, PEX tubing pipes, which are all nine inches apart. Um, and that will give us the ability to run water through those pipes. Okay. And you can heat the water or you can cool the water. And that will give us the ability to change the ambient temperature within the green itself. It's really about trying to take your worst day and your best day and shorten the gap in between them as an agronomist. You're trying to allow for the highest level of conditioning possible on a reasonable basis. Viewing wise, the, the fans out here will have a, a way better chance to see more golf, is that fair to say? Oh yeah. The views that have opened up and the opportunity to see different shots is it's so much better, especially on the front side. And the sight lines, not only for the spectators, but for the golfers, there's some places where, especially 15 T, there was a spot where we had to make sure that that T would allow for flexibility and its placement during the event, because if not, the structure would block a player sight line and with 15 especially, it's such a, an amazing hole, that would not be a good thing. <laughs> There's not a single green out here that mimics one that used to be here. Uh, the greens are unbelievably interesting. They, you know, Andrew takes all the credit for that. We just kind of paint the canvas that he created. We did work hand in hand with the, the tour agronomist and uh, some of the tour design staff to just make sure everybody was totally comfortable, that we had plenty of good usable hole locations and a lot of variety. When this thing got started back in September, October, it wasn't uncommon to have people come out here and be like, are you going to get it done? There's so yeah. much dirt. Like, like questioning the how timeline. How are you going to do it? And just the fact that we, you know, we're able to and uh, we've created the product that we have and we're going to be playing the Tour Championship out here. You know, I think there's a lot to be said for that and I'm really proud of the team. Has this been the most taxing, testing, experience of your career. It's certainly a career milestone to be proud of and I'm, I'm glad we were able to you know achieve it and create something that the membership here can be proud of.